Seattle, Washington. An explosive standoff begins when a man brandishes a samurai sword on a downtown sidewalk. A friend of the man confirms authorities' worst fears. Yes, he knows how to use the sword. Everybody on the Police quickly cordon off the block. Everybody on the curb. Over there. A SWAT team arrives and surrounds the man. They begin talking to the suspect, trying to persuade him to drop his weapon. Everything's about talking to people when we go to the scene. That's the first thing we want to do. Because anytime we arrive at the scene, we want a peaceful resolution. But the suspect is unresponsive. Never once did this individual talk to us. On occasion, he would shout out some things uh, about Apollo and Satan and things like that. But we never were able to establish any sort of a, a conversation with him at all. Officers are now three hours into the standoff. Eager to avoid bloodshed, they load their guns with special bean bags that strike with the same impact as a heavyweight boxer's punch. They're designed to halt, but not harm, suspects. The beanbag projectile is a target-specific, less lethal type of ammunition. It's a two-inch square canvas bag filled with lead shot. Suddenly, the man advances toward the crowd. Unable to convince him to stop, police fire the beanbags. The suspect retreats but he endures round after round and shows no sign of surrender. Have you ever seen anyone this Brazilian? I haven't. In three decades of police work, I haven't. As night falls, the man still refuses to relinquish his razor-sharp sword. Eight hours have passed, and police must try to disarm him another way. The man lays down to protect his face. Chemical agents, or tear gas, makes the suspect very uncomfortable. It burns his eyes, it burns his skin, and it makes it difficult for him to breathe. And in some cases, uh, makes him lose the will to fight. But the man shakes off the tear gas with almost superhuman strength, never releasing his weapon. The SWAT team has one final option. Use fire hoses to remove his sword. The jets of water pack the force of a hurricane wind. Then, in a highly orchestrated maneuver, police pin the suspect down with a ladder, pole, and riot shield. Eleven hours after the standoff began, the SWAT team finally disarms the suspect. Those guys went down by the book exactly what they were supposed to do. They finally mobilized the sword and then got on top of him with a shield and took him into custody. It was like textbook. The man is taken to a waiting ambulance. Remarkably, no one is injured, including the suspect. On the streets of Seattle, police were able to prevent a tragedy and save a life by following one strict code. Even in the face of danger, use the minimum force necessary.